some investors won't, will not want to take care of multiple private keys of, on, uh, of the multiple blockchain they are connected to. Uh, they will not want to connect to multiple blockchain. They will want to have service providers act, giving them access to multiple blockchain, giving them access to multiple assets they can invest in, and giving them the possibility to have a reporting on all their assets from one place. Hi guys, welcome to the new episode of Blockchain Beyond Hype. Today we're talking with Alexander Kesh from OnChain Custodian about custody services in a world of digital assets. So we're here today with Alex. Welcome to Blockchain Zoo. We're excited to have you here to discuss custody services in a digital asset world. So institutional funds require institutional level custody. Third-party custody services for traditional assets as bonds, cash, real estate, and equity shares are established, which means they're standardized and regulated. But this offering is not readily applicable to digital assets. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are very different from traditional assets. Is that why the custody service has to be reinvented? Well, there are two reasons, two main reasons why uh, traditional custodians are not ready to do a custody of crypto assets. This is the technology. So this is clearly a technology play. Uh, blockchain digital assets uh, ha are maintained or managed differently than traditional assets okay. through private keys. And we can talk about that a bit later and compliance. So these type of assets are relatively new. The compliance department of traditional custodians do not feel comfortable uh, securing or managing or taking into custody uh, the type of assets that cryptocurrencies are because of the various frauds that we've seen at the beginning of the industry, but, but also because of the, the very big fluctuation of that market at this stage. So although asset managers, traditional asset managers, have an interest in cryptocurrencies, express interest in the uh, cryptocurrency, be it Bitcoin or, or other type of tokens, uh, traditional custodians are not yet ready to do that. So the custody services for digital assets seem to be on a very early stage of development. Even though it's challenging, it gives you a chance to be one of the pioneers. Could you share with us your reason for leaving a great career at Swift for the sake of joining a rather small team? I think I saw the light about four years ago okay. uh, when uh, I was looking at uh, digital assets but also blockchain more as a technology than the, the, crypto, the, the crypto part and uh, I, I fell in love with the technology first, started investing in, in, in Bitcoin just to understand how it worked, uh, realized quickly that managing private keys was quite complicated uh, especially for uh, individual investors like me. Uh, actually lost one private key one day as well, oh. <laughs> uh, fortunately not at a big position. Okay. So um, when I got, was given the opportunity to, to run this, this company uh, by the founder of OnChain Custodium, Da Hongfei, the, the founder of NIO, mm -hmm. uh, I, I jumped on the opportunity really. Uh, we had a, a nice exchange during the interview where we discussed strategy. Uh, uh, I think I applied, I, I was able to apply my custody knowledge traditional custody knowledge mm -hmm. into the space and convince him that I could bring uh, something to the, to, to the company. Okay. And, uh, and I'm hoping as well that I can bring something to the industry uh, in general. Okay. So since digital assets are built on blockchain, they are highly secure. Mm -hmm. But wallets are not. So for institutions, the risk of financial loss is significant. During past years, many cases of stolen or lost Bitcoins were encountered due to hacking or fraud. How do you see this problem of investing in digital assets to be resolved? Well, focus is the challenge. So those players do not focus on custody. Their core business is not custodizing assets. Their core business is intermediating buyers and sellers when they are crypto exchanges, investing when they are crypto funds, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, don't do, they don't want to take the time or actually spending the money to establish a good operational environment, a good technological environment to custodizing those type of assets. And that's where third party custodians uh, come to play. That's why uh, th this gap is being filled by companies like us mm -hmm. who believe that they can do best and they can serve the industry uh, better by preserving those assets, ensuring that they are safe, they're not cyber hacked anymore, lost by simply having uh, a misplacement of private keys during an operation, as, as we've seen. Uh, you cannot imagine the stories I'm hearing uh, from customers that I'm talking to. <laughs> I'm talking to a family office uh, for the moment mm -hmm. where the manager of the family office, so the, the main uh, the person of the family is keeping all the private keys and sending them by email when they need to do a transaction. So okay. this is the situation that we need to solve. Yeah. I I'm also hearing horror stories by crypto uh, exchanges who actually have one USB stick for all their cold storage and that's how they manage the custody of their, the, the, the assets of their, of their customers in that case. 
So Not there very is a, secure. exactly. So there is a clear gap, uh, and I think we can bring professionalism into this uh, industry uh, by applying the traditional custodian uh, way of doing business, and also by uh, uh, ensuring that on a technology point of view. Uh, we invest into the right technology, we enhance the technology as it evolves as well to make sure it's always secure. Okay. Um, apparently, institutional investors have particularly challenging needs with respect to custody. So what are they? Uh, three major. The first one is security. So that would be covered by a, a good technology and a good operational environment, ensuring that no one person has access to private keys, for example, in, uh, within the, uh, the custodian. Mm -hmm. The second one is compliance related to if they invest on behalf of customers, they need to be able to report to those customers on a regular basis. And having a third party, a neutral, independent third party doing that is reassuring to their investors. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the third one, uh, I would say, is around uh, insurability. Uh, so are, are those assets insured? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's been a challenge actually for custodians like us to find insurance that are ready to insure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're getting there and uh, more and more custodians are being insured on the assets that they hold with uh, for customers. Okay. It seems like there is no 100% safe solution. Hot storage or online wallet usually has a pleasant UI and is easy to transact digital assets. While cold storage, the wallet connected to a hard drive device storing private keys offline can be lost, like you said, or damaged by some force majeure like fire in the building. Based on what should the choice be made? Are there hybrid options? Yes, so there is a lot of uh, advancements or uh, changes in, the, in this industry or progress in this industry. So um, there are different ways. We currently in our version one do cold storage using a multi-sig environment with multiple devices. Customers have the choice to keep one of those devices to, sing, to sign transactions or to delegate all the power to us. So that's a trust issue uh, that, that is established. But it's only a version one. It's not very easy, it's not very accessible in cold storage. You can't just extract uh, or withdraw uh, tokens uh, in a few minutes. It, it can take hours from, from, from sometimes, which is not very efficient. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at hybrid solutions, as you, as you shared, what I call warm storage, okay. uh, which is as secure as cold storage in the sense of storing the private keys into hardware devices like hardware uh, secure module, HSM, as we call them in the, in the industry. Uh, where those assets can be accessed in a more automated way while keeping them very secure. There are uh, a lot of research and development in that space. Uh, companies are proposing to store those assets on the blockchain itself and uh, shard it in multiple uh, nodes uh, on the blockchain. Uh, there is also solutions, software solutions where um, you know the Intel chips that we have in our computer. Mm -hmm. uh, a special types of Intel chips called Intel SGX is used to store those private keys. Very secure, impossible to, to uh, well, they say impossible to, to break. Uh -huh. uh, but this is still experimental. So okay. today, cold storage remain the very uh, the, the more secure way of doing it, though not being efficient enough. But by the end of the year, we will be able to uh, implement uh, warm storage, as mm -hmm. I call it, which is more accessible and more automated. Okay. Um, doesn't it create another point of centralization of the supposedly decentralized system? It looks like history is repeating itself. We are leaning to the service provider who will take a part of the responsibility for our assets and indeed power. What are your thoughts on the centralized nature of the custody services? Well, it's a very good question, but uh, when you look at the blockchains today, they very centralized themselves. When you look at some blockchain like the Ripple blockchain, 60% uh, of the assets are still under ma management by the, 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 the Ripple Foundation. So you have those type of centralization within blockchain uh, environment uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, exchanges are very centralized as well. Uh, there is the concept of decentralized exchange that's slowly but surely uh, emerging, mm -hmm. but we're not there yet. And, and, and I think it's, it's a natural step towards maturity of the industry. It's not easy to be fully decentralized. Uh, and and in, the in, the, in, the, in the case of custody, I think we're not, we're not really talking about a must be decentralized versus must be centralized. It's more a choice of the investors. Okay. Some investors want, will not want to take care of multiple private keys on, on, of the multiple blockchain they are connected to. Mm -hmm. uh, they will not want to connect to multiple blockchain. They will want to have service providers ac giving them access to multiple blockchain, giving them access to multiple assets they can invest in, and giving them the possibility to have a reporting on all their assets from one place. Others will want to do self-custody, and that's absolutely fine and doable and possible with blockchain, which makes it interesting compared to other technology. Mm -hmm. I think it's a question of choice uh, more than a question of uh, will, I would say, from okay. the industry. 
So a wave of new financial service providers for digital assets creates room for bright, innovative solutions. But it also creates room for poor services, which may damage the overall view of such a young niche. What should be minded by the institution when choosing a custody service provider? They should look for independent third-party custodians. So third-party custodians who are focusing on custody or are not doing something else, like crypto exchanges or crypto funds, who pretends to be at the same time market makers, OTC brokers, crypto exchange, etc., <laughs> etc. Et and you see that everywhere: ICO advisors, no STO advisors, because it's the new, the new, uh, the new thing to be. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, always focus on uh, choose, sorry. Uh, Providers who are focused on what they're doing will be the solution, in my view. Uh, choose the best crypto exchanges because they are the best crypto exchanges. Choose the best crypto funds if you need to uh, invest some of your assets or uh, money into crypto because they are only doing funds, uh, services. And choose third-party custodians um, that are only doing third-party custody because they are best at what they're doing. Okay. So you are on the front line of promoting this service and you know the ecosystem of APAC. How many competitors are there? How many exchanges or potential customers? Could you give us some insight on what are the opportunities and the supply and demand in your market? So uh, custody is a clear gap in the industry. So you, we've seen a lot of cust new custodians emerging uh, in the past month, almost once every week, mm -hmm. uh, one every week. Uh, in Hong Kong, there are quite a few, I would, I would say four to five that are serious competitors to us. In Singapore, uh, two or three serious. One of them uh, is on-chain custodian. Mm -hmm. uh, for the rest, in Thailand, for example, or Indonesia or Malaysia, it's still very early stage, the interest in crypto. It's, a, it's, it's, it's going fast, but I haven't seen a lot of custodians emerging. So we, we're getting a lot of questions and a lot of inquiries from uh, players in those markets to, to, to use our services, actually. Uh, so the demand now, uh, the supply I just shared, the, the demand is, is big. Um, when I took the job, I was... Uh, wondering when we would start doing, uh, making money, when we would start actually uh, getting traction. Yeah. I was uh, hoping for 2020 and actually 2019 is already uh, happening. So we've launched uh, about a month and a, uh, and a half ago. Mm -hmm. We're already onboarding 12 customers. So two crypto exchanges, crypto funds, family offices, and one high net worth individuals. A and that's just expressing the, 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 the gap and the demand that is, that is out there. Um, I guess the reputation of our company is good as well. Uh, the founders, uh, the fact that the management is all traditional capital market uh, veterans, mm -hmm. I would say, that have moved to the, uh, the, to, to the other side mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's helping. But I think in general, I think my competitors also have the, the, this demand and this need for, for custody as we speak. Mm -hmm. well, the financial industry is going through an exciting and rapid change and you are leading the standardization of custody services for digital assets. What are the next steps which, would, which should be taken toward institutional mass adoption for the blockchain technology? Standardization is exactly uh, what, what you shared. So we need more standardization. So if you are today an institution investor who needs to connect to multiple custodians, what you should probably do, you don't only take one, you take multiples okay. to, to, to diversify your risk or to uh, limit your risk. Uh, you have, and you want to connect using an API, for example, you have different sets of APIs per players. The same for exchanges. If you want to connect to multiple exchanges using a, an API, you're going to have different standards to implement. And that's a problem because it's, it's, it's creating friction in the way you connect to uh, different players. Mm -hmm. So we currently launched uh, an initiative uh, through the Global Digital Finance, which is an industry group uh, looking at code of conducts for the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, this initiative is around standardization of APIs, as simply as that. Can we use an existing standard? In this case, the ISO 20022 standard. It's a standard that, that is built for building uh, standardized messaging okay. to apply it for uh, the crypto world and to build ap uh, APIs, so messaging APIs, that can be used by all players to facilitate uh, connectivity. It's as simple as that. I think code of conduct is also an important uh, uh, step towards regulation because uh, regulation is not yet very clear. Yeah. From, inst from country to country, it's different. It's not uh, always very clear how you have to operate as a custodian. And having clarity in terms of, uh, of regulation will be required. In the meantime, doing self-regulatory uh, initiative like the code of conduct for the industry uh, will be a, a first good, good step uh, towards institutional investments. Okay. Well, this has been very interesting. Thank you for telling us about on-chain custodian and the custody services for digital assets. We do like to ask all of our guests, how do you envision blockchain changing the world? Well, it will change the world. I, I'm a strong believer in the tokenization of the economy and, and of, of capital market as well, uh, because it's, it, it's, a, it's a way to make accessible assets that today are 
are reserved to privileged people. Let's take the example of real estate. Uh, we're talking a lot about tokenization of real estate uh, in Singapore, for example, mm -hmm. which gives uh, access to uh, very quality assets to uh, investors like you and me, when today you cannot really invest in those type of instruments uh, or those type of assets. You can even imagine uh, in the future the tokenization of, of art, which is happening today. Uh, I will, in a month, invest in a Picasso painting. Oh, wow. I, I won't have it in my living room, uh -huh. obviously, <laughs> because yeah. it's a bit too much, too expensive. A little bit. <laughs> but I will be able to uh, place, I don't know, uh, 5,000 into uh, tokenized portions of a piece of painting that a museum wants to, uh, instead of selling completely, wants to distribute partially, for example, to get the liquidity to uh, refurbish the roof, which is leaking, for example. So those type of possibilities exist with uh, blockchain and, and tokenization, and, and, and I want to be part of it. All right. And how do you think the market for blockchain-based solutions will evolve? Uh, it, it, will, it will have to consolidate, I think. Uh, today, there is still a lot of different blockchains, different protocols, different standards. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's, so it's normal. It's the beginning. It's a bit like the, the beginning of internet in yeah. the 90s with uh, tens of thousands of companies hoping to be the next Google or the next Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's the stage we are in, uh, in blockchain. Uh, you, you don't have a clear winner. Uh, on, on which blockchain will prevail or which company uh, will prevail. Uh, that will be in five years, probably. Uh, in the meantime, I think uh, we need to work collaboratively together towards a uh, more uh, standardized and, and, and easier to use uh, blockchain environment for the users. Okay. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you again for coming to speak with us at Blockchain Zoo about the way that blockchain technology is being used in the financial service industry. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching, guys. We at Blockchain Zoo are excited to bring you our new guest on our next episode.